This was a hard video to make. They say that Magic players complain about everything, and I don't really think that's fair. When you say that, you shut down legitimate criticism. You're invalidating people who are saying, I don't like this, or I am unhappy about this, or simply, I disagree with this. Oh, well, you'll just complain about everything. No, I won't. And I don't. When I do complain about Magic the Gathering, it's because I love this game. It has quite literally saved my life. Twice. And I know I'm not alone in this. I have met some of my dearest friends through Magic the Gathering. And in this, too, I know I am not alone. I know people who have met their husbands, wives, all of this because of Magic the Gathering. So when I complain, and when I am angry with Magic the Gathering, it's because I want it to do and to be better. But right now, I just feel very deflated because every day Magic the Gathering feels less and less like a game and more and more like a pure cash grab. I struggle to find announcements and news that actually speak to the game. I feel like the game has been lost to this awesome power of profit that making collectible and alternate arts and high-priced packs that you can't even play with brings. Yesterday, Wizards of the Coast announced Secret Lair The Walking Dead. The Secret Lair will feature black-bordered, mechanically unique cards. They are not alternate arts. They are original cards legal in all eternal formats, and they can only be purchased as a secret layer during a window of one week. They feature the names and artwork of the Walking Dead characters, and again, are mechanically unique cards only found here. They are not skins. They are not silver border. They are, however, a decision by Wizards of the Coast that I believe is greatly harmful to Magic the Gathering and represents what is, to me anyway, not only the continuing decline of the game's priorities and values, but also what very likely will be a point of no return. Two weeks ago, Mark Rosewater explained that, due to listening to player feedback, Wizards of the Coast no longer offers mechanically unique cards as buy a box promos. Two weeks ago, Mark Rosewater said they were aware of how much this upset players. After all, it was essentially the breaking of a promise made long ago, and I have a video all about that, which you can check out here. But just two weeks ago, we were essentially told, we hear you. We know this upsets players. We are going to stop doing it. And two weeks later, they did it again and signaled that they will likely continue doing it. Oops. Actually, in this matter, Wizards of the Coast has actually gone against their word twice because if we look at what a secret layer is, or at least what they told us a secret layer was supposed to be, how they defined it quite clearly as a product that offers existing cards reprinted with special or otherwise unique artwork that could not as easily be offered in regular Magic the Gathering sets or products. Now, secret layers are for creating unique, brand new, mechanically exclusive cards and selling those cards directly to players outside of any local game store, outside of any set, outside of any product release, available only from Wizards of the Coast and available only for a limited time. And remember, secret layers are not available worldwide. A multitude of regions are unable to order them. Sorry again, Latin America, but these exclusive black border cards that may become staples of Legacy or Commander are simply not for sale for you. Not to mention the vast array of non-US countries to whom these cards are technically available for purchase, but due to shipping and import fees, will have to pay an outrageous excess to own. Remember when cards came in $4 draft boosters? My goodness, do you remember Draft? 
And what's more, these are essentially new reserved list cards. That's right, Wizards of the Coast decided one reserved list was not enough, so now it's time for two. The original reserved list, and now the IP crossover reserved list. Because you must understand that offering cards that feature another franchise's imagery and characters, its intellectual property or IP, that this is a limited time arrangement. It is highly likely that this is a one-time deal, meaning that should Negan become a $200 legacy or commander card, reprinting Negan will simply not be possible. You have one week to order this card directly from Wizards of the Coast. After that, Negan is essentially on the reserve list. Okay, so why is this such a big deal? Isn't this just a way of offering special artwork and if you can't get it during the week or day that it's going to be available, then oh well, no big deal. Nothing stops you from still playing and enjoying the game, right? Well. Not exactly. You see, the issue is, is that these are exclusive new cards with no other counterparts offered anywhere else. And they are legal in Commander in all Eternal formats. So why do we have game pieces now that you can't get through purchasing the game? And if you played Standard during the time that Nexus of Fate was exclusively available as a buy a box promo and then became incredibly scarce and impossible to buy, you'll maybe have an idea of why this is such a big deal. But even if none of these specific Walking Dead cards become must-haves for Commander or, let's say, Legacy, the precedent set by printing brand new and unique cards in secret layers is dire. This time, the cards are only legal in Commander and Eternal formats. This time. But this is going to make a lot of money. And just like with previous secret layers, this new type of secret layer will be done again and again, and possibly even expanded upon. Why not sell a special release alongside Modern Horizons 2 with unique secret layer cards that will be legal in Modern? Standard, eventually. Imagine how much money they'd make selling a must-have card for one week only that the majority of Standard decks needed for competitive play. With this secret layer, the precedent is set, and they can go from there. And you know what? Whatever word Wizard gives us about, oh, hey, we'd never do that, and you can trust us to control ourselves, we will listen to players about being upset, oh, Right, we already know that they can and likely will go back on it. Gonna be honest with you, I do not trust Wizards of the Coast. I like most of the people who work there. I think they're good people, good human beings, but I do not trust the corporate entity Wizards of the Coast. Why? Because they say one thing, then do another repeatedly, because they make decision after decision, repeatedly, demonstrably, that shows that they put increased profits above the health and the quality of the game. To see this, you need only look at the state of standard and ask yourself, do they prioritize the quality of the game or profits? Well, most recently, a couple days ago, in fact, we have the more or less meaningless banning of Euro upon Zendikar Rising's release. but. That's going to be another video, uh, if I have it in me. But whatever format you play, whether it's Standard or Commander or Modern or Legacy or whatever, just think about some of the must-have or staple cards that you play with in that format, and then imagine that those had only been offered once via a secret layer, and quite possibly contained the IP of another franchise, meaning they were essentially new reserve list cards. This is the groundwork we are laying with Secret Layer Walking Dead. Remember the very first Secret Layer and then the barrage of Secret Layer after Secret Layer that followed? Well, this product will sell, and it will sell well. It will be extremely profitable. And once the corporation has established an easy and, in my evaluation, reckless way to get 
cash, then Wizards of the Coast will abuse that system. So even if these Walking Dead cards specifically aren't format warping, it is the act of selling them that is extremely unhealthy for the game because it's just the start of this behavior. Secret Lair Walking Dead is the idea that Wizards of the Coast can and will often, and as a regular part of its business model, sell exclusive singles at premium prices without any other way for you to buy them. This is not a one-time thing. This will become a monthly thing. We've already had some months with more than one secret layer. Imagine this new method of exclusive cards as a regular and frequent offering. I assure you, if it makes money, they will use it like a rat pushing a button for sexual stimulation to absolute excess. And here's the kicker with no pun intended to Zendikar rising. This was completely and entirely avoidable, completely and entirely unnecessary. The exact same result could have been achieved by simply offering these cards as skins a la the Godzilla alternate arts that we saw in Ikoria. In other words, taking existing cards that are available through traditional means and reprinting those existing cards with new names and new artwork on them, creating a kind of official altered card. And let me tell you honestly, honestly, if these had been done in the manner of the Godzilla alternate art skins, no one would have had a problem with this. Everybody would have been okay with it, even me. And I strongly dislike bringing the Walking Dead IP into magic, and yet even my snooty, stubborn self would not have even bothered with a video about them. Or Wizards of the Coast could have gone the even more preferable route and offered them in glorious silver border. I would have absolutely loved this as it could have allowed the cards to be designed with much more enfranchise based mechanics as silver border cards let you do weird and wacky things that would never fly on a regular black border card. I actually happen to love my current collection of silver border cards of non-magic IP. I got my Transformers, Legendary, my Dinobot, my Sword of Dungeons and Dragons, my My Little Pony cards. With silver border versions of these cards, you are printing what is primarily collector's pieces that can then secondarily and for fun be used as game pieces. But the problem with printing unique black border cards is you are printing first and foremost game pieces, which secondarily have collector art on them. And in regards to that artwork of another franchise on official black border cards, all right, look, I don't wanna to go too much into this, but I do feel it is very immersion breaking. Again, the alternate art Godzillas were fine. I, I think they were pushing it a little bit maybe, but fine, fine, whatever. I, I I'm okay with them. But when you have cards with non-Magic the Gathering characters on them and no Magic the Gathering counterpart to them, well, I do feel that that dilutes or even cheapens the game. When Frozen 3, or are we up to 4? I don't know and I don't care, comes out and we have Eliza or Elsa or whatever her name is and, and her sister and that stupid snowman on must-have commander cards with no Magic the Gathering counterpart. How do you feel about that? Extremely lucrative is how Wizards of the Coast feels. That's a great franchise deal to be able to tap into and profit off of. Or hey, maybe with the new Minions movie, we'll get some Minions cards. And uh, I mean, I guess everybody here is be jumping up in joy if they got Star Wars cards or, well, how do you feel about those highly, highly likely Harry Potter cards coming out with Strixhaven? Tigtone cards or, I don't know, they'll probably do like Pickle Rick or something. And again, these aren't alters. This isn't the same thing as like, oh, I've got my real magic card and I went and I got it altered to have Darth Vader on it. I don't care about that. That's fine because there's still Magic the Gathering counterparts out there and everyone who plays that altered card doesn't have to have that image on it. But if my magic deck ends up needing staple cards like Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory and that's just the card, it's just Sheldon. You need Sheldon now, that's that's the magic card. Or or maybe you play Commander and instead of running up against Atrax all the time, uh, I don't know, I'm up against Ronald McDonald because they had a 
Monopoly deal with Hasbro, or I, I don't know. I don't want to play that. And all of that is not even getting into the very reasonable debate, and I'm not going to have it here, of the problematic precedent of bringing in characters from a strictly adult franchise, like The Walking Dead, and importing them into a card game aimed at an age range that begins with children. Now look, I I'm not a prude or a pearl clutcher, and I actually read and enjoyed The Walking Dead comics. I mean, I read them in that I stopped at, I think, issue 500 when I realized they had no idea where they were going, but just because I enjoyed The Walking Dead comics doesn't mean I feel it's appropriate to have it in Magic the Gathering. I feel kind of weird encouraging kids to play this game when Negan, who at the very best is an arguably problematic character, is now just a game piece. Not a skin or an altar, but a game piece. Negan is part of Magic the Gathering now. You may sit down to play against him in Legacy or Commander regularly. I would show you a clip of him violently murdering Glenn to illustrate my concern, but you know, children watch my channel. And also, that scene is so explicit and so grotesque uh, that there are adults watching this that maybe would be upset to have it shown to them in my video. And I think that's fair. Again, this isn't to be like some, oh, oh sort of thing, but you know, I think that's kind of reasonable to say, hey, maybe a completely adult property shouldn't be imported into a, a property that's for both children and adults to, of people of all ages. But that's a much more subjective perspective and even an emotional one. And I don't want to bring that in to this video anymore because I just wanted to analyze the actual logical concerns about this product. What's my opinion? It's going to sell huge. That's my opinion. And I'm trying to operate off of that premise, not off of stopping it from selling huge because I don't think we can. I think you have to say, all right, given this is going to sell huge, where do we go from here? That's just me, though. And a lot of other people have weighed in, and I greatly respect them and their words. Go watch Mitch's videos or Daquan's. I actually thought Daquan did an amazingly insightful yet heartfelt take on this situation and the overall state of magic. Check out Vince's or any number of community members discussing this. Consider and determine for yourself. But my position is you have to move forward from the premise these are going to sell like crazy and be incredibly profitable for the company. Expect Wizards of the Coast to attempt to put a Band-Aid on this. Now, the most brilliant fix, in, in my opinion anyway, is simply to change the border from black to silver. Problem solved. I'll even buy one. I really will. Secret layers don't print until after the sales window is over, and we know from past secret layers they don't print until six months or so until after the sales window. So just change the border from black to silver, and I think pretty much all of this goes away with that. I do not believe they will do this. In my opinion, what you will see are Magic the Gathering cards with these abilities haphazardly offered soon after the drop, or possibly even alongside it. What you're going to see is a Magic the Gathering themed version of Negan, an ogre warrior or whatever, and it'll say at the bottom, Negan. And so the main card will be the Walking Dead card, and as an alternate art, there will be a magic card. Like, there will be a skin of Negan that's an a a that looks like a magic card. And I think that's an incredibly inelegant and possibly even sloppy solution. But I believe very, very strongly that's what you're going to see happen. So those are the reasons I am upset with Secret Lair, Walking Dead. And I can't help but feel that this is us transitioning from the mentality of maybe this product isn't for you into maybe this game isn't for you. I have the Walking Dead comics, but when I sit down to play Magic the Gathering, I want to play Magic the Gathering. I don't want to play The Walking Dead. But that's what the game is now. Magic the Gathering is The Walking Dead, so... Okay.